Howdy, howdy. How are you? Okay, I'm going to put you right over here the white chairs. Okay, I think this is everybody. How are you guys? Oh, come on. you got to give me a better response than that. Yeah, you're exactly. I know it's like 6 o'clock. You're like, I'm supposed to be home, off work, having a beer. However, I really appreciate you guys being here. All right, so did you guys survive from last week? I know I threw a lot of information at you. We're going to go over it a little bit tonight again just to kind of make sure everybody's on the same page, make sure I didn't confuse the heck out of you or myself. And then we're going to move on to, we're going to work on attention tonight, and we're going to work on leave it and take it, and then we'll also work on the recall a little bit. All right, so somebody give me a definition of what engagement is. What is engagement in dog training? Okay, attention. Anything else? Focus, okay. And there's something else I'm kind of poking for. Do what? Willingness. Okay, that's actually that's probably one of the be better words. It's the dog's intention or the dog's um, energy level in order to be able to open for learning. Okay, remember I think we talked about that last week. If you take a ten-year-old child to Disneyland and ask them to do a math test, what's the chance of them wanting to do the math test? Probably pretty slim. However, if you offer the child a hundred dollars and say, okay, if you do these ten problems, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. Now where's the, where's the child's engagement? Okay, so. Everything starts with engagement. Before you ask, before you try to teach your dog anything new, before you ask anything from your dog, ask yourself, is my dog engaged? What is the chance of my dog doing it, okay? Uh, somebody give me a definition of the release, the free command. What does the free command mean? That training is over, you got it, okay. So it's a release of behavior. Okay, release of behavior. Basically, we're telling the dog, hey, training is all done. Now you can move on to whatever else you want to do. So when you're working on multiple behaviors, let's say you're working on sit and then you're working on down, you don't necessarily have to tell the dog free in order to do down, sit, come. It's free as when you're all done working. Or let's say you have a handful of food and you run out of food and you need to reload. At that point, release your dog because there's probably a good chance that your dog is either going to check out or if you get lucky, your dog's going to stay engaged the whole time. Your dog's going to be like, hey, I'm ready to do this next, okay? So last week we worked on sit and down. Give me your report card. How did we do? Did we have success on the down? Did anybody just like, oh my gosh, I wasn't able to do it at all with my dog? You guys did good? Okay. No success at all? Okay, well that's understandable, okay. Okay, anybody else not have any success? Okay, um, sit is pretty self-explanatory. Most of your dogs sit already. Did anybody need any help on sitting? Do we need to go over that again? Yes. Oh, the sprawls, you're absolutely correct. So, um, the sprawls come in different, uh, for different reasons. This puppy right here, he's got, I'm not gonna try to get technical here, but I'll just tell you, uh, he has really long back legs, okay? So he has a really long croup, he has a, uh, a lot of angulation, and so when they're at this age, their body's kind of, I don't know, kind of just kind of everywhere. He's going to sprawl more than this little, the Pitbull puppy. Pitbull puppy is what we call a short coupled dog, where it doesn't have a whole lot of angulation, a very steep croup, and so it can actually sit easier. Um, one of the things that I probably would encourage you to do is, when you do work on the sit, if you see him start to do it like every time, you can cut, how you feed him makes a big difference. So if, when you put the food in front of his nose, pull the food forward just a little bit so he has to stretch out. When the dog stretches out, a lot of times they'll sit up a little bit. And the moment they sit up a little bit, you can feed for that, it's called capturing. So you can capture the behavior of him sitting straight. Okay, but most likely just because of his structure and his conformation, he's always gonna kind of sit that way a little bit. Okay, good question. Okay, anything else we need to go over before we move on? Okay, you guys are awesome. All right, so we're going to start with attention. So attention is a little bit, it's a little bit confusing, especially when we talk about engagement. Engagement is an attitude. It is a willingness to learn. Attention is something that we're actually going to teach your dog. We're going to teach your dog when you say look, to look at your face, to look at your eyes. Okay. So this comes in really handy for all different kind of scenarios. 
Hold on one second. Hey, can you put that? Yeah. She's gonna, no, um, Christina, 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 stop. The little blueberry over there. Yep. She's gonna put a little barrier right in front so she can't see, okay? Have a little eye. Um, I tell you what, why don't, can I get, move you over one and then they can grab that chair and sit there? It's not that the dog is being bad. The dog says, hey, um, leave it like that. I'll tell you one, move it. So if, let me reiterate a little bit. This dog isn't really aggression. It's really more of a unsecurity. A lot of times when your dog, you guys ever walk your puppies on down the street and there's like something that looks really weird to the puppy and all of a sudden the hackles come up and the dog barks at it really deeply. The reason being it's unsure. So usually when a dog is unsure, they react, overly react to the stimulant. They're like, I want to bark it. It's kind of what happened with this dog. It's not necessarily aggression, but the dog's like, I'm a little unsure. I'm young and I've never been in this situation. So a lot of times if we just kind of eliminate, eliminate the dog focusing on something, it helps. All right. So let's talk about attention versus engagement. Engagement's a frame of mind. Basically engage, engagement's an attitude. Attention is something we're going to teach your dog. So it can be used in a plethora of different environments. Uh, most of the time we use it uh, when we work on healing or uh, if we're in like in a busy store and we need, we want the dog to look at us. A lot of times my clients use it if they're in a store and let's say there's a dog that's walking by and it's a little bit reactive or it's showing a little bit too much interest towards their dog. Um, there's two things you can do. One, you can give them a business card. Okay, I had to put a little plug in there. Um, and two, if your dog is looking at you and not focus on the other dog, it makes it a little bit easier, okay? So I'm gonna use my friend Christina here. She's gonna be a little demo dog for me tonight. Am I the dog? Uh, no, I'll be a dog. Okay, so what Christina's gonna do is she's gonna have a handful of food. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. I'm checking out this white shepherd over here. So if she asked me to do anything right now, what's the chance of me really wanting to do it? Play slam. Probably play slam, right? Okay, so she's gonna start with a little engagement. I'm hanging out. Hey, what you got? Oh, you got some food? All right, mom, now my brain is open for learning. Okay, now I'm focused on her. Now I'm ready to learn. Okay, what she's gonna do is she's gonna pull out a piece of food. She's gonna put it right to my nose, show me the food, and she's gonna bring it right to her cheek, and she's gonna bring it right down to her face. No, to my face and feed me, sorry. Okay, so we'll do that again. Here, turn this way a little bit so they can see you. Okay, so she shows me the food. Okay, brings it up to her face and feeds me. Boom. And you're gonna do this five, six, 10 times, okay? What we're doing is we're teaching the muscle memory of following the face. Good. Oh, hey, what you got in your hand? What you got in your hand? Oh, hey, it's up there. Oh, so what the puppy's gonna learn is when it looks at your face, it's gonna immediately get the reward. So don't do this. Don't bring it up to your face and hold it up there for 30 seconds. Because what's gonna happen is the puppy's gonna look up and it's gonna like, oh, nothing happened, I'm gonna look away, okay? So the moment the puppy follows up to the face, you wanna reward it right away. Here's also what you don't want to do. Don't hold it away from your face. If you hold it away from your face, too far. If you hold it there, what is the puppy looking at? Your face or the hand? More or less focus on your hand, right? So you want to hold it almost to your cheek. The other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to block your face. You don't want to hold it here in front of your nose because if you do that, now what is the dog looking at? Your face or the hand? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. You, can, you don't have to stand up unless you need to stand up. You can do this from a seating position. Don't tell your dog to sit. Don't do a, a secondary behavior. Pull out a handful of food. If your dog's engaged, then take a piece of food, hold it to their nose, hold it to your face. I want you to do at least three sets of those, five or six pieces of food each set. Release your dog in between each set and reload, okay? So a handful of food, do a set, release, handful of food, do a set, release, and then we'll move on. Good. And remember, don't put a command to it quite yet. I'll tell you when to put a command to it. Nicely done. A little bit quicker there, kiddo. When you feed him, push the food into his mouth a little bit and he won't be so snappy, okay? Okay. 
the other thing I want you to do is have a handful of food. You're too slow, okay? By the time you reach in your bag, you're slowing down your process. If you can do five in a row, like in a, in a one minute time frame, it's gonna learn way quicker, okay? How's it going? Nicely done. Good job. <laughs> Says I'm here. So if you be a little bit, he's really young, okay? So be way quicker. Good, quicker. And do another one right away. Good job. Good. Okay, too slow. You need to be a little bit quicker, okay? Oh, I know, I'm sorry, I won't come close. Can you guys, can you stay after? Yeah. Okay, and I'll do that one, okay? Good job. All right. How's he doing? She's, she's she ages really well. Okay, good. Okay. Have you guys at least done two sets? Okay. Now I'm going to use my frequency here and show you the next step. So, once your dog understands, when you can do this four or five times and your dog follows your hand each time, and doesn't look away, doesn't, you know, check out, then you can start putting a command to it. So remember, the verbiage doesn't matter. It's consistency that matters. If you want to use look, use look. If you want to use watch, then use watch. Whatever you want to use, but make sure you're consistent, okay? What are you going to use? Look. Okay, so she's going to say look. So she brings the food to my nose, to her face, and says look. Look. Good, and she feeds. The command comes right when it goes to your face, not when you're putting it to the dog's nose, because that would be confusing. If the moment you put it in front of the dog's nose and say, look, now the dog's saying, wait a minute. Look means you're just going to put a piece of food in my nose. You want to make sure the dog looks up to your face, look, and then you feed, okay? So now what you're going to do is we're going to provide a little bit of test. I'm going to do it with one of your dogs in a moment, but we'll do it with Christina real quick. So what she's going to do is she's going to start off with doing three or four of these, okay? Okay, one. Look. Again, two. Look. Three. Okay, now what she's gonna do is she's gonna show, put it in front of my nose and she's gonna bring it away from her face. Okay, now what do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stare at the food, right? Because we just taught the dog follow the food. However, uh-oh, somebody owes me a beer. You didn't get the memo, did you? So the dog's gonna naturally stare at the food, okay? If you get lucky, here's what you're, that's gonna happen. The dog's gonna stare at the food, hey, nothing's happening. And the moment the dog looks at your face, what are you going to do? And you're going to do what else? We talked about this last week. Nope. Yeah. He deserves a steak, whoever said that. He deserves a steak tonight. Okay? You throw the dog a party. Why is it so important the very first time you do this, you throw the dog a party? You got it. Ooh, I like that word. Concrete's behavior. Basically, you capture that behavior. The dog says, wait a minute. I get only one piece of food when I follow the hand. But when I look at your face, I get a whole jackpot, okay? Now, some of your dogs are going to do this. Hold your hand up. They're going to sit here and stare at the hand for a long period of time. They may never get the concept of looking at the face, okay? So there's two things that you can do. One, you need to go back and do a couple more from the hand to the face and feed hand to the face. Maybe come and go back or hold your hand out. She can make a little teeny noise, and the moment the dog looks at the face, you feed it. However, I cautious you doing too much of that. Because what happens is we get impatient and we automatically skip letting the dog figure this out. Okay? Thank you, you did really good. Ask yourself this. If your dog could go to the refrigerator, open up the refrigerator and make itself a ham sandwich, okay? Would you ever have to teach it to do that again if it did it on its own? No, right? So anything the dog can learn on its own, it's going to learn faster than if you can teach it. Okay? So if your dog stares at the ham, realizes that it's getting no success, looks at your face on its own without your help, then it's gonna do it. If you're a parent, this kind of makes sense. If your kids brought home their homework each day and you did their homework for them, would they put the effort to do in their homework when they brought it home or would they wait for you to do it for them? They'd wait for you to do it for them, right? Dogs the same way, okay? So, um, anybody wanna be a demo dog for me? Do what? All oh, right, come on out. I'm not. You're gonna take him. I'm gonna show you. Yeah, I don't. I got my own dogs to train. 
All right, come back right over here so everybody can see you. So she's gonna start with the, she's gonna take out a handful of food. Good job. Okay, she's gonna bring it to her face and feed. This is not a little distracted. Okay, go sit back down. He's not quite ready for this. Um, can I use you guys? Labs and pipples always do really good at this. Why? Because they like to eat. Okay, so she's got a handful of food. She's gonna show it, bring it up to her face and feed. Good, good, good. One more time. Good, okay, you still got food? Okay, bring it to your face. Okay, now wait. Oh, Dad's gonna reload. Never mind. Where to go, Dad? All right, Dad just threw the dog a jackpot. Good job. Good. Okay, Dad can go sit back down. You're too much distraction. Okay. Now feed. Okay. Now watch what she's gonna do. Bring it up to your face. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Bring it up to your face. Now bring it straight out away from you. Okay. Wait. Just hold on. Hold on. Oh, there it is! Oh, you almost missed it. Did you see? Just for a split second. Okay, hold bring, and bring it out and wait. Just wait. Oh, super! Good job. Let's do it again. Wait. You missed it, huh? Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Wait, don't help him. Don't help him. Just be patient. Ah, you missed it again. So it's it, it's very difficult. Thank you. You did really good. Here, grab your hot dog right there, please. Nope. I don't want to eat it later. So it's instantaneous. The moment the dog looks at the face, you have to reward it. Okay. Remember what we talked about last week. How quick do we have to reward for behavior for the dog to understand, to associate why they got the reward? You guys remember? Two point three seconds. Okay. Anything usually beyond two to two point three seconds. The dog doesn't coincide it, okay? So this dog actually did really good, but it was, we offered it a puzzle. We, we, it's like putting a big puzzle in front of the dog and trying to figure it out. The dog said, hey, I'm staring at the food. That's not getting the reward. I looked at the face. I got a reward once. Then we offered it again. And he's like, he looked at the face, didn't get a reward. Now the dog started jumping around, okay? And the reason being is he's trying to figure out what mom wants. He's like, okay, you obviously want me to move around or jump around or jump on you, do something. I really want to please you, mom, okay? so. Try the, mo the moment the dog looks at your face, boom, feed it three or four in a row, okay? And then set it up again. Okay, let's see you guys do it. So start with a couple like you started, from the nose to the face, and then provide a test. It is good job. The other thing, keep doing this. The other thing I didn't tell you is don't always feed out of one side of your hand. Mix it up, left, right hand. Mix it up so the dog's not always looking at one side. Oh, there it is. Good job. Feed him another one. Feed him another one right away. There it is, good. Be careful feeding on the bark. That'll turn into, hey, you just want me to bark at you. Has she done it yet? Okay, good. Good. 
Next time, hold it a little bit further away. Yeah, hold it straight, really far away from you. So it's a really easy, that, so you can tell the difference between hand, hand and face. Okay? Good job. Yes, I mentioned that. I did? You just missed it. You guys are talking. Yes, good job. Super. Okay, go ahead and finish up what you're doing, and then we'll move on. Okay, so now let's talk about the next step. Any idea what the next step could be? Okay, now we want to expand on time. What good is if the dog just looks at your face and looks away, right? The idea is your dog to stare at your face. Um, I did this with my puppy this morning. I do this with my puppy every day. Uh, a lot of times if I'm like watching the morning news or if I'm watching a show at night or something like that, um, I have food in my mouth and my puppy sits here and offers me the behavior of looking at me. My goal right now, I think I'm up to a minute to a minute and a half. Um, beyond that, he kind of starts getting a little squirrely. Okay, my goal is to be able to get to do it for 10 minutes without looking away. Whatever your goal is, it's up to you, but that's, you know, that's my goal. Um, so we have to, we have to establish, I don't want to say some parameters, but some understanding. So it's not, it's not natural for the dog to sit and stare at us with no reward for a long period of time. The idea is the dog stares at us saying, okay, I know at any time I'm going to get a reward. I'm going to get a reward at any time, so I don't want to look away. If I look away, I may miss the reward. However, it takes baby steps to get there. Right now, you guys are feeding within seconds of the dog looking at your face, okay? So you have to expand on that. So you start with 10 seconds, then you go to 30 seconds, then you go to a minute, then you baby basically add however long that you want the dog to look at you. Environment makes a huge difference, okay? Right now, your dog's actually doing pretty good. This is a pretty hectic environment. Now, do you notice most of your dogs are more relaxed this time around than last week? Last week, yeah, it was a little hotter last week too, but last week, it was all new. It was a little bit louder in here. All the dogs were kind of new, okay? Now, it's more of a neutral environment. Now, they're able to focus on you more. So, I recommend don't take your dogs to PetSmart or the, you know, co-op or whatever and practice this. This is something that you work on in your living room, in your backyard. You master this in your home environment, and then you start taking them outside of your home environment, or what we would call the neutral environment, and you start asking for the behavior outside of the environment. Okay, okay. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, I'll make, I don't know if you guys heard me earlier, I said it. Um, don't always feed out of one hand. If you always feed out of the right hand in this, the dog will always start um, uh, targeting one side of your face. You want the dog to stare right into your eyes. So mix it up. It doesn't matter what food the hand, oh, what, what hand the food is in, the dog will look directly at your face, okay? Okay, any questions before we move on? Yes. Yes. Okay. Your, your goal is, I mean, maybe set the goal is get your dog to stare at you for a minute. Maybe in the next six months, a minute is, you know, kind of your thing. Um, and then after that, you can start adding outside influences. Um, these ladies here, we work together. Uh, they'll ask the dog to look at us um, and we'll come up and we'll poke them or we'll, we'll make distractions. We'll, we'll throw things at them. We're, it's proofing, but we're making sure the dog can look at them or look at us under any distraction. It doesn't matter what it is. That's our goal, but whatever your guys' goal is. Um, if you take your dog to a store and you're working on this, maybe make your goal of getting, getting another dog to walk by your dog. So when you see another dog walking by, you have food, you ask your dog to look at you. When the dog walks by, you throw it a party. Your dog learns, hey, stare at you when another dog walks by, okay? All right, so now we're gonna work on leave it and take it. So leave it and take it's really handy. Um, leave it is probably one of the biggest things I think a lot of people use more than the come but they don't even realize they use it. Usually what happens is we start working on leave it when the dog does something bad, okay? I am guilty of this. I have probably the worst, worst dogs in the world for this. Uh, my dogs love to counter surf, okay? They love to steal food off the table. Uh, they love to steal everything, but they love to steal food off the table. So 
So one of the things that I teach my dogs and teach you guys is a leave it command. So we teach leave it to leave it can be either food, toys, other dogs, your socks, underwear, whatever the case may be. The idea is we teach the dog that when I say leave it, you don't go towards it, you don't take it, you don't put it in your mouth, okay? But before that, we need to teach the dog to leave it. So now let's back up a little bit. Let me ask you guys a question. If your dog is barking in the backyard, let's say at the neighbor's dog or at the postman or something like that, and you open the door and you yell at the dog to stop barking, is it fair? Okay, why not? Say, say that again? Okay, it's being a dog, okay. Okay, guarding his territory, okay. Okay, let me ask you this. Would you yell at your dog for wagging its tail? Would you yell at your dog for panting? Okay, so you'd be amazed how many people call me up and they'll say, Jason, my dog is barking at the other dog on the other side of the fence. And I ask them, well, have you taught the dog not to? Well, no, I just yell at it. Or I throw cans of rocks at it. Okay, and then I ask them that same question I just asked you. Would you yell at the dog for wagging its tail? Well, they say, well, of course not. Okay, well, then you shouldn't yell at the dog for barking. However, that does not mean you have to accept the dog barking. So, if we want to teach the dog to stop barking, we first teach the dog to bark. Say it again. If you want to teach your dog to stop barking, you first teach your dog to bark. Any idea why? Mm, not quite. Not quite. We're actually teaching the dog what it is that they're doing that we want them to stop doing. Because while the dog is barking, they're wagging its tail, right? And they're panting, and they're probably pacing, right? So if we just start yelling at them, how is the dog supposed to know that's exactly what we want them to stop doing? So what we do is we teach the dog to bark on command. Okay, the same way we taught the dog to bark on command, we teach the dog not to bark on command. So now the dog understands, oh, the barking is what you want me to stop doing. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so in the same aspect, if we teach the dog to bark on command, to stop barking, if we're gonna teach your dog how to leave things alone, what do you first think we're gonna teach your dog how to do? How to take it, you got it, okay? We're first gonna teach your dog a take it command long before we teach the dog a leave it command, okay? So take it's very simple. Basically in a moment, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a handful of food and your dog is going to just be there and you're going to hand a piece of food and you're going to say take it. Now I know earlier I told you don't put a command to the behavior until you've established the behavior that you want. However, do you really have to teach your dog how to eat? Your dogs know how to eat, okay? So this is the one contrary to the rule. So basically when you do this, you're going to have a handful of food. You're going to hand the dog a piece of food and say take it. Count to two in your head, hand the dog a piece of food, say take it, okay? So I want you to do like three sets, a handful of food each set, okay? And then we'll move on. So go ahead and do it. No, one, one piece of, yes. It's okay, one, you had, so you don't have to keep reloading. Yeah, okay. So let me clarify, when I say a handful, I don't want you to feed the dog a whole handful of food. It's your hand is a hopper. You're basically feeding one piece of food at a time. I just want to eliminate how much time you have to go into your bag and get food. So freeze it and bring it frozen, that really helps too. Okay, so when you're done with the handful, let's uh, let's stop and we're gonna move on. Okay, so 
We've established when you hand a piece of piece of food to the dog and you say take it, obviously the dog is to eat. Okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now try to implement leave it a little bit. However, you wanna make sure this is not a punishment. There is no punishment. It's much like ask yourself this. If you walked up to your spouse and put a hundred dollars in the front of their face and they took it, would you smack them? Well probably wouldn't be fair, right? Because well, especially this couple here, but <laughs> They, they'd be thinking you're handing them something, right? So if you take and put a piece of food in front of the dog's nose and you don't say take it, I guarantee it's gonna go for it, okay? So make sure you are not punishing the dog. We're trying to use some science here, okay? So what my, Christine, my friend Christine's here gonna do is she's gonna start with a couple tickets. We always start with a couple tickets. Okay, take it, good, take it, okay. We did a couple tickets. Now what she's gonna do is she's gonna take a piece of food, put it in the palm of your hand, and she's gonna put it up a little higher just out of my reach, okay? Where I can still see it, but it's right there. And she's gonna say, leave it. Now what's gonna happen is most of your dogs is they're gonna try to go for it. When they go for it, close your hand. Don't take your hand away. We don't eliminate the problem. We help the dog understand the problem, okay? We use the problem to our advantage, okay? So the dog's gonna be licking your hand, close your hand, okay? Can't get it, can't get it, uh, backs off. She opens up her hand again, okay? Now the dog's probably gonna go for it again. She closes her hand, okay? Dog backs off. She opens her hand. You're looking for two things. One, you're looking for the dog to kind of back off and not go for it, or you're looking for the dog to kind of look away and say, okay, I'm not even gonna go for it. The moment that happens, boom, you hand a piece of food to the dog right away. Feed it actually three or four times in a row. So what we're doing is we're teaching the dog that leave it is not a bad thing. We're not punishing the dog when we say leave it. We're actually teaching the dog, if it makes the correct choice to leave it, we're going to reward it. Now your dog's gonna say, man, I hope mom says to leave it because when mom says to leave it, I'm gonna be able to get rewarded. Does that make sense? Okay. Do what again? So, no, you wanna make sure that the food is presented, the dog can basically see it right there and they leave it alone. Yeah, once he, once he shows you that he's not going for it, you say take it and you hand it to it. Okay? Um, I'm going to ask, can I, can you guys do this real quick for them? Okay, come on. We'll do one with this little puppy and then we'll have you guys do this. So you guys can get an idea. Christina, can you hold the puppy? Sorry. Can Christina, who's going to do it? You're going to do it? Okay, can, can she hold your puppy? Okay, so not distraction? Okay. Dad's gonna, Christina, hold him back just a smidge. That's just, there you go, too much, right there. Okay, start with a couple take it. Take it, good. Okay, don't worry about the good boy, don't pet. Just say take and hand it, okay? It's okay. Take it. Good, you take it a little bit slow. As you're handing the food to the dog, you say take it. Take it. Good, just like that, good. Okay, so I'm gonna pick on him for a minute because his wife said I could. He keeps reaching in his bag. This is why I want you guys to have a handful of food. If, you, if every time he does this, he has to reach in the bag, the bag is gonna become a lure, it's gonna become a target. The dog's gonna say, wait, dad doesn't have that bag in his hand. Uh, I don't know if I really wanna do it today, okay? Okay, try it again. Take it. Good. Again. Okay, so do me a favor. Now take a piece of food, put it in your other hand. Okay, turn your hand over, bring it up higher, open it. Say leave it. Leave it. Oh, say take it, hand it to it. He got very fortunate. Did you guys see what happened? It's luck. He didn't. He was the dog didn't really understand it. Have you guys ever done this before? No. Okay. Do a couple more tickets. Take it. Take it. Good. Take do three more tickets and do a leave it. Take it. Good. Take it. Okay. Do a leave it. Leave it. Take it. Take Good it. job. So he got very fortunate. When he said leave it, the dog kind of backed off. In fact, the dog didn't even look at it. That was actually really good. Good job. Okay, so your dogs are not, unless unless we get that fortunate, I don't think your dog's gonna show the same reaction. But if they do, make sure you immediately say take it and hand it to the dog, okay? All right, let's see you guys try it. I'll come around and help you. Wanna start on that side? Yeah, the golden chair is really worried about it. Okay, 
wait till it lo doesn't look at it. Take it. Good job. That's fine. I just backed him a little bit. Oh, that's right. Is there a time like when they just take it right away or just? It's take it right away. Take it at yeah. yeah, you're trying to capture that behavior. If you don't, if you don't feed yeah. it right away, okay. it's not going to understand what but it got rewarded for. Back attention to it. I mean, like he was still staring at you for a second. Um, you, you can wait to see if the dog looks at it and then looks away. If if the dog was just merely distracted, yeah. then it probably didn't associate to leave it okay. with that. So you can maybe give them that opportunity. Okay. How's it going, ladies? All right. <laughs> okay, your temptation is too much. Bring it up a little higher. Bring it up higher, higher. Close your hand. Okay. Slowly open it and say, leave it. Wait. Close it. You just wait. Okay, open your hand back up. Yeah, he's using dad to cheat. Okay, just wait. Wait. Just ignore it. Oh, just ignore it. Okay. Open your hand back up. There. Good job. Take it. Good job. How's it going? You get the idea? Good. How's it going? Good. Nicely done. Okay, but make, but make sure your hand is open before you can say take it. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to eliminate the food so you can't see it. You want to say, okay, it's there. I'm not going for it. Okay, I won't go for it. Okay. It's like, ask yourself this. If you leave a ham sandwich on the table, do you want to hide it from him and say leave it, or do you just want to tell him to leave it and it'd be right there? Okay. Good job. So when you guys do this, try not to feed on the barking. If he looks away and starts barking at you, don't feed him. Wait till he stops barking, because what's going to happen is he's going to say leave it, and he's going to start barking at you. Okay, go and finish up what you're doing, then we're gonna move on. That's a really good question, so we'll talk. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so the question came up, anytime we're working with the dog, should we, t should we hand the dog food and say take it? Um, yes and no. Uh, it's one of those things where we didn't really have to teach the dog to take it. So technically, we're not needing to work on take it at the same time. Um, however, let's say, I don't know, let's say the dog is trying to jump up and take the food out of your hand or is getting kind of aggressive when you're working with the dog, then you can go back to say, hey, take, when you hand the food, take it. That way the dog is kind of waiting for you and not trying to you know, steal it out of your hands. But most of the time you really don't have to. The dog understands if you hand them food, they're gonna be able to take it, okay? Um, a couple of things I heard uh, going around. Um, make sure when you do this, you don't say leave it, 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 okay? What happens is if you tell the dog leave it more than once, you build up a tolerance. If you have kids or you're gonna one day have kids, do you want to tell your kids 10 times to clean the room or do you want to tell your kids once to clean the room? Okay, one of the things, if you do this, I apologize now, that I dislike uh, when parents have children and they're in public, I'm gonna count to 10 and then I'm gonna do whatever. So what does a child learn really quickly? Yeah, right? <laughs> Wait till nine and then, okay, I'll kind of do it. 
Okay, your dog is much the same way. You want to say leave it once and just say leave it. If the dog goes for it, that's why you just completely close your hand. The dog can't fail, okay? Plus, you want to make sure this is very black and white to the dog. The difference between leave it and take it, okay? Um, can I use you, uh, Christine, for a minute? Here's where it gets a little bit gray. So Christina's gonna stand for me. Christina's gonna do leave it. Okay, the food's right there. And I look in, I look away, and she's really excited. And she says, take it. But she doesn't move the hand to me. I go to the hand, okay? If you do that too many times, what's gonna happen is the dog's gonna learn something really quick. They're gonna learn, oh, hey, the moment I leave alone, mama's gonna mean I can take it, and so I'm just gonna go for it. Thank you, dude, good. So imagine this, imagine you're walking down the street one day, and there's this nasty old McDonald's hamburger that's been there for a week, and your dog wants to go for it, you say leave it, and your dog leaves it, but then the dog says, wait a minute, anytime mom says to leave it, that must mean she wants me to take it, and the dog goes for it. You wanna make sure when you say take it, you are handing the dog the food. You are giving it to the dog, it's very black and white. The dog doesn't necessarily just get to grab it, okay? Now, the contrary to the rules, a lot of people put food down for the dog, they make the dog wait, and then they say take it to the dog, that's completely fine because your dog is eating out of the bowl and it's in your own house, okay? But you wanna make sure you don't blur the lines between leave it and take it with your dog. If you do, it can really bite you in the butt later, okay? So we start with food and then we can implement other things. I had a client one time say, we worked on this and the next week they came to me and they said, man, it really didn't work that well. I'm like, oh no, what happened? It killed my chicken. Wait a minute, what? Yeah, it was doing food just fine, and then I let it out in the yard, and it went after the chicken. I said, leave it. And you kind of know the rest of the story from there, okay? So we have to build up to it. Yes, the idea is hopefully that you can build up to where your dog will leave the cat alone or the chickens alone or whatever the case may be, but right now you're still in the learning phase. When you can take and you can put the food like on the ground, you can drop food around, and you can pick it up and the dog doesn't steal it, then start going to other harder things like skateboards, cats, dogs, whatever your dog is interested in, okay? But don't, don't think because right now your dog's doing good tonight that you can go home, put the dog with the cat and expect the dog not to chase the cat. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions on that before we move on? Okie dokie. All right, so we're gonna talk about the recall. We're not gonna be able to do it with every dog here uh, just because of space and logistics, but we're gonna do it with a couple dogs. Can you go give me a long line? Thank you. So let's talk about some uh, mechanics here. If we have a rubber band, we stretch that rubber band, what does a rubber band wanna do besides break? Yes. Yeah. Wants to snap back to its original form, okay? So we wanna teach the recall much the same way. We kinda covered this a little bit in yesterday or in last week's class, but we're gonna cover it again. A lot of times we set our dogs up for failure when it comes to recall, when it comes to a lot of things, but mostly with the recall. What happens is when our dogs are puppies, and they're probably uh, under 16 weeks. We mean everything to the puppy. The puppy never wants to leave our side. And then as the puppy gets a little older, now the puppy can become a little more adventurous. And now the puppy starts making choices. So what happens is we start trusting the dog too much. Where if the dog's in our house or the backyard, the moment we walk out in the backyard, the dog runs to us because we're its whole world. But now we take the dog to the beach or we take the dog to the park. The dog goes free and we try to call the dog and what happens? The dog says, oh man, there's more exciting things around the world than just you or mom, okay? And so then what happens is we try to call the dog again. Dog doesn't come. And every time we try to call the dog, what are we doing? Yes, we are robbing ourselves. We're basically shooting ourselves in the foot because now we're teaching the dog a behavior. We're teaching the dog that we have no way of following through. We have no way of keeping uh, of, of the dog coming to us because the dog is making its own choice. So the moment that starts happening and it, the, and it continues to happen, now the dog throughout its whole life is gonna make the choice not to come to you or, or to come to you, okay? So when you teach the recall, the first thing I want you to always remember is teach it in a controlled environment. Okay, I can say that again. Work on it in a controlled environment. In other words, work on it inside your house or inside your yard first for months. Once you get it outside of those environments, then bring it to another controlled environment. Um, I always like tennis courts. Tennis courts are nice because they're all fenced in. There's not a whole lot of distraction and you can work on it without a long line. If you have a friend with some property that's all fenced in, there's not a lot of distractions, you can work on that. If you don't have that option, my friend Christina here is gonna show you what we use. 
we have what it's a, basically it's a long line um, it's a 33 foot leash uh, this one's 15 but uh, it'll work for night but uh, you can get these in all different sizes or you can make your own um, if you end up wanting to buy one it's kind of funny if you go to a pet store and buy a long line it's gonna cost you like 35 bucks if you go to like the Grange or the horse blanket and you get yourself a lunging line for horses it's like 12 bucks it's crazy okay and that's all it is it's basically a really long line and the reason why this is really handy is when you start working on distance when your dog's away from you and you're getting your dog to come come to you more than the you know, six foot leash now you have control because what happens is let's say i'm christina's dog i'm doing really good inside the house she decides to bring me to a park and i'm over here with this dog and she says come and Nah, nah, I don't, nah, okay, mom, I'm not gonna come to you. Yeah, I wanna check out this dog here. Okay, now she has this long line on. Now she can follow through, okay? Plus, she's not setting me up for failure. Because let's say she brings me to a park, I take off and I run up to this, this vicious pit bull over here. Just joking. I run up to a, a dog and that dog is not good with other dogs and then there's something happens and, you know, it's all downhill from there. So make sure your dog is in a controlled environment or you have control before you really set them up for failure, okay? So that's the first lesson. The second lesson, let's go back to the rubber band idea. So the recall can actually be a really fun game for you or if you have anybody at home. If you have anybody at home, it makes it a whole lot easier. If you don't have anybody at home, we'll also cover that in a minute, okay? So what we're gonna do here in a moment is I'm gonna take a couple dogs, we're gonna show you, um, and we're gonna play a little bit of recall game. So what's gonna happen is Diane, can you use it for a minute? Mm -hmm. Okay. Christina, will you be over there on that side? Okay, so I am Diane's dog. Diane, come here. Okay. Okay. So Diane and Christine, they're sisters. Let's say they're sisters. They live together and they're going to work on this together. Okay. So Diane's going to hold my collar. Okay. The long line, act like the long line's on me. Okay. The long line's on me. Okay. Christina's going to show me some food. Come up, she's gonna put it right in front of my nose. Oh man, I really want that. And she's gonna run away, she's gonna say, puppy, puppy. Oh puppy, man, puppy, I really wanna get to where I really wanna get to where I really, and the moment she gets over there, she's gonna let me go. I'm gonna run to her. She's gonna feed me. Free. All right, okay, she's gonna grab my collar as she's feeding me. Turn me around, Diane's gonna come up. Oh, what you got there? Oh wait, I wanna get that, I wanna get that, I wanna get that, I wanna get that, I wanna get that. And she lets me go and I run to her. Okay, so remember the concept with the rubber band? The more we stretch the rubber band, what's the rubber band want to do? Wants to snap back, okay? So this is why you want to work and why we're going to work it on a long line. Come here, please, Christina. Okay. So let's say I'm Christina's dog. Uh, Diane's over there. Okay, Christina lets me go. I start heading to Diane and I'm like, hey, how you doing over here? How you doing? Hey, I want to check you out. Okay, so what are we teaching the dog at that point? We're teaching the dog that has options. We don't want to teach the dog it ever has options. Come is come, no matter what, okay? There's no options, and there shouldn't be any options in any dog training, but especially come. So let's say Diane has the end of the long line. Okay, Christina lets me go. I start heading to her, then I start going this way. Diane can either back up or she can reel the long line in. Okay, mom, all right, I'll come to you, okay? We always want to make sure we follow through, okay? Here's the thing that a lot of people do. You're not, you gotta be exuberant when you, when, you do, when you do this. You want the dog extremely excited. If your dog, turn around, turn around that way please. No, no, come here, please. Okay, turn around that way. If I'm Christina's dog and Diane's calling me and she's saying, puppy, puppy, puppy. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really care about you. When the moment she lets me go, what am I gonna do? I'm probably gonna beeline it over to this dog, right? Okay, so if the dog is really trying not, if the dog is not trying to get to the other person, then don't let the dog go. You need to change your variable. Either you need a high reward, or the other person needs to be a little more exuberant, or you need to use a toy, whatever the case is. You gotta have, the dog really wanna get to that person, because the moment the dog lets go, we wanna teach the muscle memory of running to the person. Ask yourself this, do you want your dog just to meander to you, or do you want your dog to run to you? Exactly, want the dog to run to you, okay? All right, so um, does anybody want to be a volunteer for me? Thank you, yes. Okay, you guys want to be a volunteer, don't you? All right, come on out. So any idea why, we're, why we use the word puppy right now instead of come? Why, are we, why am I telling you to use puppy, puppy, puppy instead of come yet? Sounds exciting. Okay, sounds exciting, do what again? 
You're you. Uh, you guys are both correct. Plus, the dogs are still in the learning stage of come. If we do this ten times, and seven out of ten times this puppy goes over to this dog over here when dad says come, what do you think the puppy's going to remember more? The successes or the, the failures? Most likely the failures. Okay. Um, can you hold the line for them, please? So she's just going to hold the end of the line. You're going to hold the dog by the collar. Yeah, you just come right here in the middle, okay? Dad, come up to the dog and see some exuberance. Run back and say, puppy, puppy, puppy. Okay, run back, say, puppy, puppy, puppy. And let go. Good job. Okay, have his, hold his collar for a minute. Okay, can I pick on your husband for a minute? You said come here. I just want you to use puppy. It's okay. Until we can establish correct muscle memory, we don't put a come command to it. Okay, run back, say puppy, puppy, puppy. puppy, 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 puppy. And let go. Well, that's kind of... <laughs> now, can anybody tell me why the dog hesitated when it got close to mom? You'll get like major points if you can figure this out. Nope. Dogs don't see very good. So if I'm looking this way, I can see dad just fine. When I'm looking this way and the light's behind mom, it makes her look kind of scary. And that's what happened. The dog's like, I'm not sure who you are. So next time mom's gonna kneel down a little bit and that'll help. Okay, come up down. Hey, psst, don't let him stare like that because then he's gonna bark, okay? Okay, dad, show the food. Run back, say puppy, puppy, puppy. Let her go. Oh, okay, good job. Okay, mom, can you kneel down this time when you get over there? And don't go so far, okay? Okay, right there. Let go. Way better. Good job, super. All right, go sit back down. Take your leash and take your dog, please. Or well, grab your leash and then take your dog. Would you like to try this? All right. Okay, um, Christina, start by holding. Can you make friends with the puppy, Christina? Yeah, do we want this long on it or just keep this little one? Um, you can take the little one. Oh, you can keep the little one if you want. Okay, so Christina's going to hold her by the collar. Or him, sorry. Okay, and she's going to hold the end of the leash. Okay, show them the food. Now, wait a minute, that wasn't very exuberant. You got to be goofy. There's a reason why I'm 41 and single. Okay, and go. <laughs> so the puppy's not quite sure. Um, Christina, stand up for a minute. Hold it by the collar. There you go. And then you're gonna run with it a little bit, okay? Kind of just... And go. Let go. Not quite sure. All right, good job. All right, I don't think he's gonna do it, kid. You can try it one more time if you want. Okay, I don't think he's gonna do it. He's really, he's too worried about the work. Yeah, he's got a lot of uh, stuff going on. Yep. And go. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Um. You want to be a demo dog for me? Okay, now I'm gonna show you what we do if you don't have anybody to help you with this. Okay. No, you're good. Oh, you know, actually, I do want that long line. It is kind of short. Okay, can you, um, she's gonna hand this to you, please clip it on the collar. And it'll maybe be bigger than her whole head. Yeah. <laughs> if that doesn't work, just clip it onto your leash. There you go. Now we got a little safety. Okay, what Dad's gonna do is he's gonna take out a little handful of food. Okay. Um, give her more leash than that, so when you go away, it doesn't drag or doesn't pull on her. Okay. Okay. Here's what we do. You're gonna show her a couple pieces of food, and you're gonna drop it right on the ground. And as she's eating it, you're gonna go away from her. Okay. So drop it right there. Drop it and run away. 
Say puppy, puppy, puppy. puppy, puppy, puppy. Good job. Feed it right away. Good job. Drop a couple pieces right there. And go away. Nice. Good. Good job. Do me a favor. I want you to drop like three right there. Okay. Okay. Okay, go away. <laughs> okay, so the dogs are really good. The idea behind dropping like a multiple of food is you're able to get further away, okay? But you see what we did here. Basically, you can, you can take your leash off if you want, or take my leash off. Um, basically, what we did here is the same concept. Instead of somebody holding the dog, we dropped a little handful of food. We ran away from the dog while the dog's eating. The moment the dog's done eating, now we're 20 feet away from the dog, and now the dog turns around and comes running to us, okay? So distance creates energy. The more, the further we are from the dog, the faster the, hopefully the dog is gonna come. And we wanna teach the muscle memory, when we say come, to run to us, not meander to us. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let's see, what, am I, what else am I missing? Um, I think basically that's it. So when you can do this, let's say you can do this like 10 times, and out of 10 times, your dog comes to you the same speed you want, and with consistency, then start putting a command to it. But don't put a command to it until the dog is offering you a really good return. In other words, the dog gives you, you know, eight to seven times successfully before you start putting a command to it. Because remember, if it fails seven times and it succeeds three, it's gonna remember more or more failures than successes. We want to teach a muscle memory of coming, okay? Here's one of the issues that I see a lot of times people happen. Everybody uses the word come right now. Your whole family uses the word come. The dog's not coming. So you have to go home and teach your family not to use come. If for some reason they, the dog gets out or they need to call the dog, tell them to use puppy, puppy, puppy. Because here's the thing, if we use puppy and the dog makes the incorrect choice, puppy is not a command we're gonna use, right? Okay, so if the dog fails on using puppy, we don't really care. That's why we use it, okay? It's more or less just an exuberant word. You can say pickles, you can say, I don't care what you say. M most people say puppy, so we just gotta use puppy, okay? And the other thing you do is, you, if you wanna really play a fun game with your dog, um, if you have a house, or a house, sorry, if you have a larger house and you have room, drop food like in your kitchen and go hide in a bedroom. Okay, this is really important. Actually, we do this with a lot of uh, uh, police dogs and a lot of uh, uh, more kind of like search and rescue competition dogs where we'll play hide and go seek games with them. And what happens is it teaches the dog to really work and hunt for the person, to really like have a little separation anxiety because the dog learns really quickly, if I don't keep an eye on you, you're gonna disappear. Plus, it's a fun game. Dogs really like to find us. I do this with my puppies, we'll go, uh, we have a big training field out in Jacksonville. Somebody will hold the dog. I'll go hide out in the trees or go hide behind a building. I'll just wait till the dog finds me. Now, of course, if there's a person watching the dog to make sure they don't run off and get into trouble or you know run somewhere, but it's really great. Plus, when the puppy finds you, they're so exuberant. They're like, I haven't seen you in for months. Okay, the next time you do it, the dog is more frantic to find you. And pretty soon, the dog never lets you out of their sight. Okay? Can you imagine taking your dog to a park and the dog just sits there and stares at you the whole time, like, hey, I don't want to leave your side, because if I leave your side, you're going to disappear. Instead of you letting the dog off leash and the dog just takes off and does its own thing. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, so we covered attention, teaching your dog to look at your face. We covered leave it and take it, the act of leaving food alone and taking food. And then we also worked on the recall. Okay? So next week, we're gonna work on uh, jumping up and staying. And so unless you guys have any questions, I think that's it. You guys did really good tonight, work on those things. And then next week, we'll go over those things again and work on some new things, okay? All right, if you need help, stay in your seat. If not, I'll see you next week. <laughs>